Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum, peace be to you, and welcome to this episode of Beauties of Islam. I'm your host, Yusuf Estes, and I wanted to continue talking about one of the beautiful concepts in Islam, and that's the belief system. The belief system in Islam is something that's so amazing that someone like myself, who had never heard about these things before, found resolution in many of the questions, many of the things that I've been thinking about all my life. I was thinking, how is this, and how is that, and how does this work, and how could that be, and where is God, and is there a God, what's the purpose of life? And all of these beautiful concepts that we find in Islam give us not only resolution, but it gives us peace. It gives us that sakina, tranquility of the soul to know, in fact, not only does it satisfy the mind, it satisfies the heart to understand and realize what the belief system really is. In Islam, there are six main, what they call, pillars of belief. The first one is the most important of all. It's the belief in Almighty God. That God is one. He is unique. There's nothing like Him. He's not like unto the creation, and He's not in His creation. God, Allah, is mighty and above all of that. And His attributes and characteristics are the epitome and perfection of each and every one of his characteristics or qualities. He is the ultimate creator. And he's the only destroyer. The real destroyer. Because he's the one who brings everything into creation. So if it's destroyed, then who is the only one that could do it? He is. He's the one who brings about all that we see. All life. But he's also the one that causes all death. Because everything is to him the same. It all belongs to him. And he sees it as a whole. Whereas we only see minuscule, teeny little snippets here and there that we catch and try to understand. But yet he is mighty and above all of that. So his hearing is absolutely, totally incomplete. We won't say it's just perfect. It is total. His seeing, again, is total. His love. And we want to make a whole program about that. We'll come back to his loving, his his lovingness is eternal and always. It's ongoing. We want to come back to some of these other characteristics and, and understand that he is the only creator. And if it exists, he created it. And whatever purpose it has, he's the one giving it purpose because he is the one who decides when something's going to happen, how it's going to happen, where it's going to happen. And how long it's going to happen. All of these things are in his hands, in his control at all times. We as humans cannot really fathom who is God, what is God. But this is the first and essential belief in Islam, at least to understand there's only one. Start with that. There's only one. There's not two. If there were two, Islam tells us, if there were two, they would be in competition. <laughs> and eventually they would be fighting each other. So there's only one God. The second thing Islam is teaching us is that we don't compare him to his creation. And when our worship is coming about, and we want to worship in thanks to him and to ask from him, all of these things that we have a relationship with our God is directly to him, not to something he created. So we don't need a statue, an idol. We don't need a picture or an image. We don't need something between us and him. We don't need an icon. We don't have to have an intercessor. We don't need a priest or a bishop. We don't need a preacher to come between us and our almighty God. We can speak to him direct from our heart. And talk to him in a language that we understand. Because after all, he created us. He knows what's in our heart. And all we have to do is turn to him. Turn to him inside of ourselves and say, Oh Lord, oh God, Allah, help me, guide me. And that communication is beautiful and it's direct. And it's one of the beauties, one of the amazing beauties of Islam. And that's just the first of the beliefs that we have. Can you imagine? Another belief in Islam after that is called the belief in his malayaka, his angels. What do we believe about the angels? Now, some people say, well, we believe in angels and, and what? Now, wait a minute, what do you believe about angels? Islam teaches us that angels are created by Allah from light. 
And he created them before he created the human beings. And angels are perfect. They never make mistakes. Whatever Allah orders them to do, they do it. And they do it the way they're supposed to do it. And they don't come up with, well, maybe I will, maybe I won't. Because they don't have free choice. They are commanded by Allah and they do as they're commanded. Now, you don't see them. Why don't you see them? Well, they're made out of light. And you don't see light, by the way. You only see what light reflects off of. You can see my hand. Why? Light is hitting my hand and then coming back to you. See? Okay. Now, in space, it's always depicted as being black. Why? Because there's a lot of light in space, but it hasn't hit anything yet. And until it does, you won't see it. If I put my hand down, now you won't see anything until the next thing that the light hits. Make sense? Yeah, think about that a little while. There are many things when we start to talk about the belief systems in Islam, as you begin to grasp more of it, it all makes sense. Even the small details. Let me give you another example of that. When we talk about the next of the creations of Allah is the jinn. Allah created another type of being after he created angels. Before he created human beings, they're called the jinn. What are the jinn? In the Old Testament, they're referred to as the Ephraim. These are mentioned as the mighty uh, sons of God in chapter 6 of Genesis, verse 2. But in fact, what we understand about them is that they are not humans, yet they have some of the human quality, which is to be able to make choices. Some of them, by the way, are believers in the law, and some are disbelievers in the law. Some of them are good and some of them are bad, and they still exist today. And you're going to say, now wait a minute, but I don't see them. But you don't see the angels either. And you don't see these because they're made from a kind of fire that has no smoke in it. Now, think about what I just said. We're going to come back. We're going to pick up right there and give you a break. And we'll be right back with more Beauties of Islam. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. Brothers and sisters, to increase your iman. خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه ورد Learning how to recite the Quran properly. Learning the meaning of what we recite. Concluding the ahkam from the verses which we recite. Trying to implement what we learn in our daily life. We would listen to the participants and the guests. We'll take your phone calls. We're going to recite life. We'll listen to your recitation. And we'll correct it according to the rules and regulations which we'll state in each episode. Now, your dream will come true, will come true. Inna nahnu nazzalna al-zikra wa inna lahu lahafidhun Islam is keeping up the pace Islam is for every race We're back, you're watching Beauties of Islam and we've been talking about some of the creations of Allah. We mentioned that we believe in Allah. He's one and unique. We talked about the creation of the angels. They're made out of light. And then we were talking about another creation called the jinn. Now, what, what is this about the jinn? Why do you have to believe in that? Well, they're part of something called al-ghaib. Al-ghaib means the things you don't see, the unseen. You agree and I agree. We don't see Allah. Okay, so he's in the ghaib, the unseen. We agree, there are angels, and you don't see them. They're in the ghaib, unseen, made out of light. And now the jinn, and we don't see them. They're also in the ghaib. They're made from a fire which has no smoke to it. And if fire has absolutely nothing like a smoke to it, or that it could be that you don't see that either. There's heat that you don't actually see, isn't that true? But we don't see the jinn. But we said that they have choices. And they were making choices even before Adam or human beings were ever created. And their choices were sometimes good, sometimes bad. From them comes the one we call Lucifer or Iblis. And who is that? Who is Lucifer? Who is Iblis? You might say he's the devil, the Satan or Shaitan, as he's called in the Arabic language. But actually... He started out as a worshiper of Allah. And he was worshiping and praying to Allah and extolling Allah to the extent that Allah raised him up to be even with the angels. 
Now remember, this guy Iblis is not an angel. But he was worshipping alongside of them because of his Ibadah or worship. Being so lovely and Allah raise him up, you see. But then what happened? Uh, and this is an important story. So we'll digress from a moment from our beauties of Islam to go into this to get a concept here to understand a big mistake that some people make when they say that he's from the angels. Angels don't make mistakes. They do as they're commanded. So when Allah created the best of his creation, what did he create? He created Adam, the human being. He created Adam from what? He created him from mud or clay or dirt. Huh? And when he created him, he said, That he created Adam in the best of molds. The human being created in the best, in the best of the best of the best of molds. And then reduced him to the lowest of low. And how? And this is the story of how the devil pulled his trick on Adam. But we don't come to that yet. I want to show you what happened after Allah created Adam. Allah ordered all the angels bow down. And all the angels did because they have to do as they're commanded. And they bowed down. All of them bowed. Except Iblis. He didn't bow down. Now if you read this, in context, you understand that he was not an angel. But if you just read the words, all the angels bowed down except Iblis, you'll say, well, see, that may, he means he was an angel. But otherwise, in the Quran, we find in other places that Allah said he wasn't an angel, but he was from the jinn, and he's created from a smokeless fire. And that's exactly what he said. You created Adam from mud, but I'm created from something better, from a smokeless fire. So I refuse to bow down. Why? Because I'm better than him. I am better than Adam. And I refuse to bow down to him. And by so doing, he disobeyed Allah. And whoever disobeys Allah, he's in trouble. But especially if he does it out of his arrogance and his pride. I refuse to obey because, huh, I know better. And in this way, he put himself in the worst possible condition with Allah. And Allah condemned him to, to hell forever. And he said, I don't even care. This let me take him, meaning Adam, and his children along with me to hell. What? For what? Because of this thing called pride or arrogance. Kibber in the Arabic language. And what is kibber? And kibber is something comes from kabara. Kabara is the root of the word akbar. And only Allah is akbar. Allah is greater and greater and greater than anything. But a human being has no right in front of Allah or anything that's created. The jinn, the angels, nothing have the right to come in front of Allah like this and say, oh, who am I? You know, I'm this, I'm that. No, Allah gave you a commandment. You do it. Now, what happened next? Well, that's when Allah told Adam that he could have anything that he wanted in all of the paradise. Go ahead, enjoy. But there's one tree, don't eat from it. Of course. You know what's going to happen. And the devil came to him and to Eve and got them to eat from that tree. And they were cast down because of that. But Allah knew from the beginning they would eat from it. That's why Allah put it there. Because this life, and this is the whole reason for me telling you this story, so you can get this one beauty of Islam, to understand this one thing. This life is nothing more than a test. This is a test. To see if you will refrain from the things you've been ordered not to do, such as don't eat the fruit. Or if you will obey and do the things you've been ordered to do, such as bow down. The devil was ordered bow down, and he didn't do it. Even to this day, he refuses to do that. And that's why he's condemned to hell. Not because he didn't bow down, because he still refuses to do anything about it. Adam, on the other hand, did something he was ordered not to do. But he was different. How? Because he repented. He repented to Allah. And he said, Allah forgive me. And another beautiful teaching in Islam, whoever sincerely repents to Allah, Allah will always accept it. I wish we could continue and go on more and more about this subject. But we're going to have to wrap it up for this episode. But I'll tell you what. Go to the website and get more. The website called Beauties of islam.com until next time peace assalamu alaikum
Krishna. <laughs>